Students, families, counselors, thank you so much for joining us for the Virginia Acro Virtual College Fair. This is for all Virginia students, and we're so thrilled that you're joining us for the third hour of this six by six college fair. A few housekeeping items before we jump into these presentations. This is a six by six format. So you have six institutions that are here. They are here for the entire 45 minutes. That means you can ask them questions throughout the duration of the session, but they will be presenting on their institution for six minutes, and then uh, we'll hand it off to the next institution. So we encourage you to use that Q&A, ask questions of these great college representatives that are here joining you today throughout this session. You do not need to wait for an institution to be presenting to ask a question. So if you have a question for Marist, you don't need to wait until Marist is presenting to ask that question of Marist. You can ask it at any point. Your questions can be framed generally. So how many of you have a basketball program? How many of you have pre-med? And then all six of our college reps can answer. Or your questions might be a little bit more specific to one institution. You can at that institution if you'd like. Hey, PIA, tell me about this specific major. You can do that in your questions as well. And then just that one institution will respond. Your cameras and your microphones are off. The college reps can't see or hear you. So the only way to engage is to send in those questions through that Q&A button. This is the final hour of the Virginia College Fair, so we are recording this session and all of the sessions, and we'll have the recordings posted tomorrow at strivescan.com slash Virginia. We want you to go back, check out the other schools that you have uh, maybe missed in this process, or uh, if, if contact information flew too quickly on the screen, you can go back to the recordings and check things out. The order for today, we are in session C3, this uh, box right here, Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Johns Hopkins University, University of South Carolina, High Point University, Southeastern University, and Marist College. I'm going to have Laura go ahead and grab screen share from me because Laura with PIA is the first institution. And as Laura gets ready with screen share, just a reminder, send in those questions, engage with the college reps through the duration of today's session. Hi, everyone. Hold on one second. I'm getting ready here. I'm paused. Looks like we can just see your Zoom screen. So if you want to stop share, can you stop share? Yes, I can. I'm sorry. And then try it one more time. No worries. OK. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and let somebody else go. Let me see where it's at. I can't find it. All right. Um, Johns Hopkins, are you ready on the fly to, to hop in here, Victoria? Yeah, I can um, start us off. All right, thanks. Hi, everybody. Um, is that the right screen that you are? Yep, we can see it. You're good. So I have many monitors, so I, I always get confused. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm excited to be here tonight. My name is Victoria Daw. I am an assistant director of admission here at Johns Hopkins, and I am the regional rep for the state of Virginia. Um, so here are just um, some photos of the Homewood campus, which is the primary undergraduate campus. You can kind of start to picture yourself there. I know uh, you all probably aren't able to visit in person right now, which is um, just the way that it all is, but just to situate um, where we are, we're located in Baltimore, Maryland, which is right here where the blue dot is, um, uh, or blue star um, in the blue circle. Um, and we have a huge Hopkins network throughout the city, um, including our School of Medicine, the School of Public Health, which has been in the news a lot recently, our School of Advanced International Studies, but the primary undergraduate campus where you'll spend your time is our Homewood campus that has the Krieger School of Arts and Sciences and the Whiting School of Engineering. Between the two, we have about 5,300 undergraduate students, which makes us a mid-sized school. We were founded as the nation's first research university, which means we are all about that, um, you know, exploration and discovery and really committed to creating new knowledge in the world, but we were also founded as a liberal arts school. So with that comes academic freedom and flexibility. Um, we have many different um, majors and minors. I can drop a link in the chat of all of them after this for you all to check out. Um, but what really makes our um, academic approach unique is our lack of 
core curriculum. So that means there's no set group of classes that every single student needs to take. Um, instead, we are just going to ask that you take all of the classes you need for your major and that you take a certain number of classes outside of your major, but that can be in anything that you want. So if you want to go to college and never take a math class, or if you want to go to college and never take a history class, you can absolutely do that at Hopkins. And that makes it really easy as well to double major, have a major and minor, and really pursue your academic interests in unique and creative ways based on exactly what you're interested in. The other real hallmark of our academic experience is our commitment to research and hands-on learning. Nation's first research university, it is um, plentiful and almost all of our undergraduates are participating in some form of research and that access is there because um, you know all our faculty are doing research you can find it easily and research can take so many forms it doesn't have to be a white lab coat with the test tubes and the pipettes that you see at the bottom um, but it can look like all the other photos on the screen too you know um, filming a documentary um, working in our archaeological museum, taking advantage of the telescope on the roof of our physics building. There are so many ways to kind of take your knowledge and what you're learning inside the classroom and apply it in a real world hands-on way, which is so important. So um, around 80% of our students are involved in research. 85% um, of our students are pursuing some type of internship related to their field before they graduate. So it really does allow our students to take what they're learning and apply it um, and get those experiences. I'll touch briefly on student life. I'll also drop a link in the chat for you of all of our different clubs and organizations. We have over 400 and they really define the student experience on campus. Everything is entirely student run, student led, student organized. So the undergraduates are really creating the community that they want to see. That Homewood campus is the primary undergraduate campus and it is mostly undergrad. So they're the dominant population. We do have many graduate students, but they are on our other campuses. So you really do get that sense of community on the Homewood campus um, through all of our clubs and organizations and just um, traditions that we have. I also love to talk about um, the city of Baltimore. I think it's such an important part of who we are as a university. We are right in the um, middle of the city. We are 15 minutes from downtown. We kind of have, you know, as corny as it sounds, the best of both worlds in that you've seen some pictures of the green quads, the brick buildings, the really picturesque college campus. Um, but we also, you step, a, you know, a block off campus and you're right in the middle of the city and you have access to all of the public transportation and opportunities that the city has to offer. So it's a great um, community to be a part of as well. I'll just wrap up with a little bit of admission stuff. We, these deadlines are for this past year, but they'll be similar um, for you all in the upcoming year as well, typically early November and early January. We have two early decision rounds, which are binding agreements, which means if you are admitted, you are expected to enroll, and we have a regular decision round. And then lastly, to wrap up real quick, I um, just want to touch on our commitment to financial aid. We operate need blind admissions and we meet 100% of demonstrated need for all of our admitted students without any loans. So that means that our students are graduating debt free and making sure that we can bring the best and brightest students to Hopkins without, um, you know, any financial barriers to them or their families. There's tons of information about financial aid, about admissions on our website. You can grab a quick um, photo or screenshot of this page if you want to connect. And I'll drop my own personal email address in the chat for you all as well. Great. Thank you so much, Victoria, for sharing that great information. And uh, next up, uh, as a reminder, we're in session C3. So we will go for University of South Carolina next. So Casey, go ahead and grab screen share from me. As Casey grabs screen share, feel free to use that Q&A, send in those questions to the admissions representatives. You can at a specific institution if you have a question for one, or you can ask a general question and all of our reps will answer there. Um, and next up, we've got Casey, go ahead and take it away. All right, thank you so much. So my name is Casey Padgett and I'm the regional rep for admissions at the University of South Carolina and my territory is Virginia. All right, so a little bit about U of SC. So we have about 27,000 undergraduate students. 
on campus. Um, about 58% of our students are in-state and then about 42% of our students are from out-of-state. Um, Virginia definitely is one of the largest out-of-states to go to South Carolina. Um, so you'll see a lot of uh, familiar faces, you know, from your high school or from Virginia area, or you can meet um, new friends as well. <clears throat> We have students from all 50 states and 100 plus countries, and then we also received the Higher Education Excellence and Diversity Award from Insight into Diversity. Um, here is Kaki making his way on down to um, South Carolina. So um, USC is in Columbia, South Carolina. It's the capital of the state. Um, and it's a really cool town. Um, it definitely is more of like a medium sized um, large city. Um, but it's about six hours um, from the Tidewater region, about eight hours in Northern Virginia, um, about five hours from Richmond, and then about four hours um, from the southwestern part of the state. State. So we have an airport in Columbia. Um, we also are only an hour and a half um, south of Charlotte. So the airport in Charlotte. And then we also have um, a airport um, in Charleston, which is um, about two and a half hours east of us, you know, Myrtle Beach, Hilton Head, all those beautiful beaches are super close to us. And then Greenville, South Carolina is about two hours north of us um, where you can go hiking and explore the mountains. So we really do have um, the best of both worlds, um, in my opinion. So a little bit more about Columbia. Um, so we do have about 30 different Fortune 500 companies in the city alone. So this is great opportunities for co-ops or internships. Um, you know, you can get paid for those as well when you're at South Carolina. Uh, we also have um, museums. Um, it's definitely as a big arts town. Um, we have three different rivers that run throughout the entire city of Columbia. So if you like to go hiking or canoeing, kayaking, paddle boarding, you can do all of those things as well. Um, we have two separate downtown areas called the Vista um, and Five Points, and it's a great way to kind of explore the city beyond campus. All right, so moving on to our academics. So we are a large research university. Um, we have 56 nationally ranked programs. Our student faculty ratio is about 17 to one. So typically um, your freshman and sophomore year are going to be in your general education classes, um, typically about 50 to 100 people in those lecture hall classes, but in everything else, about 85% of our classes have 50 students or less. So um, we really do care about having that um, important pedagogy to make sure that you're successful um, in college and that you're comfortable, you know, raising your hand, asking those questions. So we do have a ton of faculty to make up for the fact that, you know, we have about 27,000 undergraduate students. We also have 324 unique degree options, um, which you can see uh, the different colleges and schools right here. We are most known for business, engineering, arts and sciences, and nursing. We actually are um, ranked number one in the US for international business the past 21 years. So we're very proud of that ranking. Um, and then we also are top ranked for um, sport sciences and sport management as well. If you're somebody who knows that you want to challenge yourself when you're in college, definitely take advantage of our Carolina Elite Program. So um, we have the South Carolina Honors College, which is top ranked for public schools, honors colleges. And then we also have a Capstone Scholars Program. So the Honors College Program is all four years at USC. Um, the class sizes are typically uh, 10 to 15 people. It's pretty much your very own college experience. It's in a large research university like USC. So it really is the best of both worlds. You have very unique classes you can take. Um, it's a separate application process to the general university as well. And then the Capstone Scholars Program is a leadership program your first two years at South Carolina, so your freshman and sophomore year. Um, it's a great way to kind of make an impact on campus um, and take challenging courses as well. All right, so more of the fun stuff, our student life. We have um, 500 plus student organizations. About 25% of our student body decides to do Greek life. So it's not exactly a go Greek or go home kind of school, but it certainly is a great way to meet new people if you'd like to do that. Um, we also have um, student government, leadership service, um, dance marathon, club sports, of course, is a big one. And then on the bottom right hand corner, that is our um, student gym. And so yes, that is a pool on our campus. Those are beautiful palm trees. Average temps are about 65 degrees all year round. So I know right now it is absolutely beautiful. So I hope you can get a chance to come visit us this spring or this summer to kind of see for yourself. 
And we also um, have a lot of Gamecock spirit, lots of school pride. Um, so we are in the SEC uh, Division One, And uh, as you can see, all those are all the pictures of us kind of celebrating our victories. Um, as of late, our women's basketball team uh, went to the Final Four. And unfortunately, we did not go past that. But we are still very proud of them. And we actually were national champions. Um, in 2017. So we are um, excited about that. And then fun fact for our football team, um, we have a new coach. It's actually um, Frank Beamer's son. So since you're from Virginia, I assume you know about Beamer from Virginia Tech, um, but his son, Shane Beamer, is our head coach for this year. And we're super excited about that. So fingers crossed. All right, so here are some um, important deadlines that will definitely sneak up on you. So our early action deadline is um, October 15th. It's non-binding, and you'll receive a decision around the mid-December timeframe. Um, our early action deadline um, actually has a, a supplemental material that that goes with it. It's about a month after. And then I mentioned before our honors college application. Um, it's three essay questions and two letters of recommendation in addition to the regular application to South Carolina. And that is due November 15th. And the last time to apply to USC is December 1st. So again, those definitely um, you know, tend to sneak, sneak up on you. And here's all our contact information. So feel free to reach out if you have any other questions and go Gamecocks. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Casey, for sharing that information on University of South Carolina. And a reminder, we are here in C3. We are going to move on to High Point. Just a, a programming thing, PIA, Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics, is going to move at the very end after Marist College. So next up, we do have High Point University. Uh, High Point, go ahead and grab screen share from me right now. And as they do, a reminder, send in your questions, use that Q&A, and um, engage with these great admissions representatives who are here to answer your questions. And um, Melissa from High Point, go ahead and take it away. Looks like you are muted. Hello, everyone. Sorry, my computer's being a little weird. It's not letting me turn my camera on, but I look like that picture right there. <laughs> um, but thank you all for coming. Oh, it's letting me start my camera now. Sorry. <laughs> thank you all for coming and joining us today. My name is Melissa Blakey, and I work with students from Virginia um, coming to High Point University. High Point University is located in the city of High Point, which is part of the Piedmont Triad in the middle central area of North Carolina. We're a smaller private liberal arts university with just under 5,000 undergraduate students. Um, our top 10 freshman majors, actually our most popular thing for students to come in as is undeclared. Um, and so we actually have a great program called Project Discovery. It's a nine step process for students to find their majors with the ass assistance of what we call our success coaches, which I'll be talking about in just a couple of moments. Um, but yeah, so these are our top 10 freshman majors and we do have um, 59 majors and 64 minors for students to choose from. As for our extraordinary education, we have a 15 to one student faculty ratio with 100% of our classes being taught by faculty. So that means that you will never take a course by a student or a graduate student or TA. You'll always be taught by one of our faculty members. And 97% of our faculty members have terminal degrees, meaning that they um, have the highest level degree in their field. Um, in terms of success coaches and project discovery, like I mentioned earlier, project discovery is the way that you would work with your success coach to find you the major that's for you. A success coach is kind of like a advisor. However, it's not just a faculty member at High Point. A success coach is someone who's really going to help you with that adjustment from high school to college. And they're really gonna work with you on getting adjusted to High Point as a whole, as well as figuring out if you're not sure what major, what major is right for you, figuring out which clubs and organizations are right for you, as well as finding different resources on campus to help you succeed like tutoring or our writing center and things like that. They're gonna help you learn how to advocate for yourself on our college campus. We also have a lot of state-of-the-art academic facilities, including our human biomechanics and physiology lab, which is great for exercise science students, our Kane Conservatory, um, which is absolutely beautiful, has a ton of plants for our biology students to study, as well as just anybody to go and hang out. It's one of my favorite places to go just any time to work on my laptop there. Um, we also have our Culp Planetarium, which is in the background of this slide. We have news and radio studios, which you will see on the next slide, and our bb and executive boardroom, which is sponsored by bb and um, which is great for students to practice presentations in a boardroom style room so it's because when you graduate you're not just going to be presenting to a classroom you're going to be presenting to a boardroom style room most likely when you're in your um career field 
Um, as for some of our other unique educational experiences, 25% of a high point education is experiential learning, meaning hands-on learning. No matter what major you are, one quarter of every class you take will be some sort of hands-on experiential learning. We have access to industry leaders. For example, in this picture is Byron Pitts working with some of our students um, in our TV studio. He's um, He is a news anchor for NBC um, and he um, it comes to High Point often. We also offer undergraduate research across all majors and student teaching in local classrooms um, as early as your sophomore year. We have a crime house off campus for our criminal justice students and a stock trading room for our business students. Um, as for our student life, we have 16 NCAA Division I teams. Um, we are in the Big South Conference. Our women's basketball actually made it to March Madness this year for the first time in a while. Um, we're also currently building a brand new arena and conference center that will seat about 5,000 students. It's going to be absolutely amazing and great to go to games in. Um, we have 200 plus campus clubs and student organizations, including but not limited to fraternity and sorority life club and intramural sports and multiple religious groups across campus. As for applications, um, we have the, we're on the Common App, so that will open on August 1st for fall 2022. Um, we have a few different plans you can apply by. So first is gonna be early decision. That's our binding contract, saying you're 100% committed to high point. You can see the deadlines for those. Early action is our second plan, um, and that one's going to be non-binding, and you'll find out if you're admitted to High Point no later than December 16th. And then we also have our regular decision plan. As for our averages, so these numbers you're seeing at the bottom, those are not requirements. Those are averages of our current freshman class. So um, on average, our current freshman class has an unweighted GPA of about a 3.4 and an SAT or ACT of 1230 or 26. We are test optional and have been for the past five or so years and continue to remain that way. As for my information, um, this is how you can contact me. I'll be working with all of, my stu all of you from Virginia. Um, and there's my office number, my text number, as well as my email and my HPU Instagram, which you are all welcome to follow me on. So thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing that information about High Point University. And next up, we do have Southeastern University. Chris, go ahead and grab screen share from me. Next awesome. up is Southeastern, followed by Maris and then Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. And as Chris is getting screen shares ready to go, send in those questions, use that Q&A for our admissions representatives. All right, all right, everybody here. Okay, I have a short video and then I'll get started. Fire up. It's that feeling deep in your bones. That desire to be part of something bigger than yourself. It's what drives us, propels us. It's what brought you here. Together, we believe. We dream. We strive for the impossible. Innovation is our fuel. Community is our breath. We discover, we push boundaries. Experiencing life as it was created to be. So fire up, fire up your imagination to chase, to create, to dare. Fire up to be the change this world is waiting for. We are waiting for you. All right. So that's just a short little video about Southeastern. I'm kind of highlighting our campus and just everything about us. Um, uh, we are a private Christian university located in Lakeland, Florida. So if you've ever been to Orlando or Tampa, we're smack dab in the middle of both of those. So it's a good spot to be in. Um, our students come from more than 53 different countries. So we have a large international population of students uh, that we are able to work with and give an opportunity to come steady 
over in the states uh, with Southeastern. Our total, um, as far as on-campus enrollment with students, uh, we're about 2,400 students uh, will come to campus and do classes on campus. Um, and then as total, as far as, in, um, as, far as um, online students, uh, on-campus students and some extension sites we have, our enrollment is about a little over 10,000 students. So my story short about me, um, I graduated from Southeastern in the spring of 2019. Um, I was an athlete, I uh, played football. I also work with any recruited athletes now in a um, local territory here in Lakeland, Florida. So any student that is from Lakeland, Florida that is going to Southeastern or any athlete that is recruited will work under me. Um, academic highlights. So our five most popular majors as of right now um, are kinesiology, uh, psychology, biological science with a concentration, um, and then bachelors of social work, um, elementary education. Those are probably our top five right now. We are a liberal arts university. So um, we do have a big draw for ministry students uh, that wanna uh, do ministry at our school, or wanna do film production, or um, any kind of college of arts and media um, is also pretty uh, big at Southeastern. Uh, some of our newest majors, aviation. We just got an aviation school just two years ago. So students can graduate with a, a bachelor's in aviation management and have enough flight hours to be able to do commercial flights right out of college. Um, political science, tourism and hospitality management along with language, culture and trade. Uh, nursing is uh, one program that we'd like to highlight. So our SU nursing students, um, for the first time passing rate for the NCLEX uh, RN test, which is what students will take after they finish their nursing program, uh, is an impressive 92%. Uh, so that exceeds the national average uh, for students that are going through and taking that test once they graduate um, to be able to pass it on the first time. Uh, so that's something that we kind of uh, are honored to say about our nursing program um, because we prepare them that well for that test. Next, our education department, 95% um, of SU's education um, department graduates are offered teaching positions uh, before the start of the next school year following their graduation. So um, it'll be nice to you know, be able to be a student teacher for your senior year and then be able to know that once you graduate, you will have a job waiting on you for that next school year. And 95% of our seniors are able to uh, be able to claim that uh, for going forward after graduation. Um, our accounting program, uh, which is kind of fairly new, um, the first time passing rate for students that take the CPA exam uh, since 2001 is 85%. Uh, so being since 2001, that sounds like, oh, that's a, it's a pretty long time, but actually for an accounting major, um, that might be something that schools have had for forever. So for us, it's fairly new, um, and we've been actually seeing some success with it growing. Uh, so this is which is, um, is something among the highest as far as colleges and universities in Florida, uh, being able to have that 85% passing rate with the CPA exam. Um, it's something that we like to be proud about because we are a smaller university and we have smaller class sizes. So to be able to boast a number at 85% um, is something that we are proud of. And then admission updates for students. So we are test optional. We're not requiring SAT or um, ACT tests for students coming in for this fall, um, just due to cancellations, things getting pushed back. Uh, so we are able to award students academically just based off of GPA. Um, we are planning on offering a full on-campus experience for next year. So what that looks like as far as following um, COVID protocols, we still wanna be able to have as normal as possible of a uh, fall and a spring for next year for students just to give them that full experience. Um, academic scholarships are available up to, uh, up to really $19,000 for students, uh, anywhere from 5,000 to 19,000. If you wanna apply for free, you can scan the code here and use Future Fire to apply for free. That's about it for me. Great, thank you so much, Chris, for sharing that information. Uh, next up, we've got Marist College, who will present uh, on their institution, followed then by Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. So Marist, go ahead and grab screen share from me, please. And as they do, reminder, send in those questions via that Q&A button. Looks good, take it away, Jesse. Awesome. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jesse Mungin. I am one of the mission counselors at Marist. I am a, a regional rep, so I represent uh, Virginia, Maryland, DC, um, Maris, uh, just a little bit about Maris. Um, Maris is actually located in Poughkeepsie, New York. It's about an hour and a half um, outside of New York City, hour and a half um, 
south of Albany. So nestled right in uh, the middle in the Hudson Valley, it's a, the, the historic Hudson Valley, um, which provides a lot of opportunities for our students. Uh, what you're seeing here is the, the campus um, and all the kind of scenic views, but um, it, it truly offers a lot of opportunities for our students to get a, a uh, kind of traditional college feel while still having access to uh, larger cities for um, different opportunities and such, uh, it, such as internships, um, which I'll speak about, but also just um, uh, entertainment as well. Uh, just some quick facts about us. Uh, we are a um, medium-sized uh, institution, just over 5,000 undergraduate students, um, over 40 different majors. There's a lot of opportunities for students to uh, create degrees, uh, paths that best fits them. So you can double major, you can uh, have one major and a couple different minors. Um, we also have certificate programs. So there's a lot of different opportunities for students to um, really pursue their goal, uh, pursue their goals and their passions with us. Um, we also have some uh, graduate programs. We do offer accelerated programs where you can get your bachelor's and master's uh, within five years as well. Um, students come from 47 different states, 64 different countries. Um, class sizes are uh, typically small, uh, 16 to uh, one is our student uh, faculty ratio. Um, typical class size is 18 to 26 students per class. In terms of uh, the, the programs, uh, areas of study, uh, this is what we have to offer. Uh, we, we really have programs all over the place. I would say the unique thing about Marist is um, when you apply to Marist, you're applying to the school as a whole. So you're accepted to uh, the school and you have the flexibility to take classes wherever you would like. Um, you, you don't have to worry about being locked into the School of Science and then uh, decide that you want to do business and, and have to worry about any transition like that. Um, so that that's really what allows us, um, our students to be uh, so flexible in, in what they end up studying. Um, in terms of the uh, academic experience, there's a lot of hands-on experiential learning. Uh, we have state-of-the-art facilities on our campus. Uh, we're constantly uh, renovating um, and, and uh, providing more opportunities for students. Uh, we want them to get internship level experience before they leave our campus uh, to go on and do internships. 83% of our students will complete at least one internship. Many will go on and complete more. Um, so it, it is truly, uh, depending on the interest of the student and the, the, um, the academic major um, kind of will dictate how many internships the students will do. Um, we also have a ton of research opportunities for students. You can start as early as your first year. Um, faculty student research is prevalent across all academic uh, fit fields at Maris. Um, and then another thing that we do uh, a lot is study abroad. Um, we are ranked uh, third in the nation by Open Doors in terms of study abroad programs. Uh, we have over 70 different programs. Uh, we really want students to, to do it and try to make it as accessible as possible for students to do so. Um, so no additional costs uh, than coming to our, our campus in New York, um, just uh, besides the, the air flight and having some spending money while you're abroad. Uh, so 50% of our student body studies abroad at some point. And then there's over uh, 80 different clubs and organizations for students to get involved in while you're on campus. Uh, we are uh, a division one school. So we have 23 division one sports. So uh, lots of uh, school spirit there as well. Um, in terms of application, uh, these are the deadlines that we operated on this year. Uh, so they should be uh, about the same for this upcoming fall. Um, in terms of admission profile, uh, th those are the numbers of the middle 50% of the students who applied and were accepted. Um, we are test optional. We have been for 10 years. We think that four years of high school academics is enough of an indicator to, for, for us to uh, determine how successful you'll be at our school. Um, so you do not have to submit test scores to receive uh, acceptance to the college or to receive scholarships. Uh, scholarships Merit-based scholarships are uh, anywhere from 5,000 to 25,000 renewable every year as well. Um, we are open. Um, if you would like to come visit our campus, uh, there are tons of opportunities. We are also doing some virtual programs. Um, you can also do self-guided tours with, uh, and not really interact with anyone or uh, just stay in your car. Uh, there's tons of options there. Um, and then lastly, this is my information. 
if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me and I uh, will be glad to assist you. Uh, thank you so much again for joining us this evening. Great. Thank you so much, Jesse, for sharing that information. And last but not least, we do have Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. And go ahead and grab screen share here. Everything looks good. And take Thanks. it away. Thanks, Zach. I'm Laura, PIA, Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. We are a school of maintenance aviation. I'm going to talk a little about the program we have to offer. Forbes magazine ranked us number one. Why? The quality of the education, the affordability, and again, the completion success in this program. If you're a little mechanical, if you're thinking about going into engineering, if you like to work with your hands, if you like to work in a team setting, this industry might be for you. What's interesting is we have 56 major employers that come to us, Boeing, American, Delta, Southwest, American, come to us. And again, I'm gonna explain the program a little bit about what we actually do. This is what an AMT, an aircraft maintenance technician actually does. Looks like the sound's not working for your video here, Laura. When you share screen, you'll have to press the uh, share audio button as okay, well. Okay, I'll just move on. What we actually do is we build, we repair, and again, we maintain aircraft. Our locations, it's kind of interesting. Our main campus is in Pittsburgh. We've been around over 91 years. We're very small, but we're very mighty in the aircraft aviation industry. Youngstown, Hagerstown, and Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, is our 16 month program. So you test for your airframe, you test for your power plant, you walk out with a federal government license to touch anything in the world that flies. Airplane, helicopter, drones, and blimps. I'll keep moving on here. This is our Youngstown campus. And I show this because our average day is between eight to 2.30 at school. This program is a 16 month program, like I told you, but this is a federal license that you actually received after you test for your airframe and your power plant. Over here, some areas you can work in the industry, helicopters. Every hour a helicopter's in the air, it needs a half hour of maintenance. Again, these are just some actual photos here I show you. Cargo industry is booming, why? Think about it, all the PPE this past year, everybody ordering online. Now again, we do not actually put baggage on the airplane or cargo. What we do is certify, repair, and again, work as a team and a group to get that aircraft back up in the air. Over here, another part of our industry, aerospace is just growing. We are accredited, approved, and certified. Again, we have financial aid available and we are military friendly. Over here, a little bit more, we are not a liberal, for your college. What we are, we start 50 students roughly at a time. We do three starts a year. So again, our class sizes are small. Over here, what we are actually too is hands-on. So you will have book work, you will have paperwork, but then you actually go and work on this equipment from eight to 2.30. The beauty of PIA though is, we don't have you drag any of this equipment home on the weekends to work in your driveway. Everything is done from eight to 2.30 at our school. Aircraft technicians in demand, this is why I'm talking to you tonight. This is my problem. 76% of our workforce is over the age of 50 in my industry. Only 4% are females. So please, if you're thinking about going into engineering, please look this route. A little more information here. I talk a lot about the maintenance end of it. Down in Pittsburgh, we offer the associate's degree of the avionics. That's inside the flight deck. Over here, the aviation maintenance technology. We also have the associate degree in Pittsburgh and we have the 16 month program. Our employment statistics right here are just absolutely fantastic. 100% placement just at the Youngstown campus alone. A little more about us. This is who's hiring our graduates. And again, please notice GE Aviation. Those are the engines on these actual jets. So there's all different areas you can go into. 
Also what's required, what's not, you need a high school diploma. And again, no SAT, no a ACT. We will train you what you need to know. If you need any more information, please go to pia.edu. And again, if you're interested, please go pia.edu backslash learn more. We have personal tours available and open houses. And again, here's just some people that graduated from the program. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much for sharing that information on PIA, very appreciated. We have just a few more minutes and I'm gonna encourage all of my colleagues to uh, bring turn back on their cameras and join us. We're gonna do a, br a brief round robin in the last five minutes here. And uh, we're gonna go in order of presentation. So PIA, you'll be at the very end, but beware uh, Maris had to step away. So you'll be uh, uh, after uh, second to last. Um, so the question for all of the panelists, what advice do you have for students as they're going through the college search process? So Victoria, we'll start with you. What advice do you have for uh, the juniors, underclassmen as they're going through the college search process? Yeah, thank you. I feel like my piece of advice is really corny, but it is true. And it's just to when you're applying to college, just be true to yourself and be yourself on your application. I hear questions all the time about, is this major better to apply for? Is it easier to get in with this major? Or what activities do you like to see? We like to see activities that you care about doing. Um, and we wanna see who you are because you can't have a diverse campus if every single student is the same. So we're looking for every student to be different. So I would just make sure that you um, show us who you are on your application. Great advice, thank you for that. Casey, advice that you've got for students going through the process. Yeah, I think it's really important to stay organized first and foremost. And so um, I always encourage students to create um, just an Excel sheet or a Google sheet, whatever um, works for you. And then keep a list of all the schools that you want to look into, um, you know, keep a list of the uh, deadlines that are coming up. Um, scholarship deadlines, those are very important. Um, what kind of sports they have, if they have any majors specifically, because it's going to be a lot of information thrown at you at once. So keep it organized and you'll be just fine. Great. Thank you for that. Melissa, some tips you've got. Yeah, so mine's a little bit similar to Casey's, but um, make a list of things that are your non-negotiables. So things that you know your school needs to have for you to be happy at, and things that you know that if your school has, you won't be happy with. So things you don't want and things you do really want, and it'll help you narrow down which schools have those things to start looking at. So it doesn't seem as daunting looking at all of these schools, either in just Virginia or on the East Coast or in the entire country, whatever your parameters are, that could be very daunting. So that'll help you narrow it down a bit. Great, thank you for that. Chris, some advice that you got for the students. Yeah, um, kind of on the opposite end of it, um, when it comes to finances, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, us counselors are here to help students uh, find those scholarships, find those different ways of paying for school. You've worked hard um, all four years and college uh, is a privilege to most people. Some people can't, you know, take advantage of that. So I think just don't be afraid to ask questions, uh, have full trust in your counselor and full trust in how hard you worked and uh, just ask those questions to get you some aid for school. Thanks, Chris. And Laura, some advice you've got. Oh, my biggest advice is dream big. You don't know how many students I talk to. They'll come up to me afterwards and say, oh, I've always dreamt about working in the aviation industry or I've dreamt about traveling. So please look into your dream and tell somebody about it and then research it. Awesome. There's one question that came in uh, that we may not have time to all type the answer to, but I'm gonna do a show of hands to get this. Um, show of hands, yeah, when you apply to the institution, are you automatically qualified for scholarships? If the answer is yes, throw your hand up. When you apply to the institution, are you automatically applied for, uh, can you automatically qualify for scholarships? Okay, so majority of you. Um, do you also have some scholarships that require a separate application? If the answer is yes, put your hands up. Do you also have some scholarships that require a separate application? So for generally in the admissions process, submitting an application to the institution qualifies you for some uh, institutional aid, but then there will be some additional leadership scholarships or music scholarships or major scholarships or community service scholarships. All of those may require additional applications as well. So every institution is gonna be a little bit different. 
Um, just be uh, mindful of that and check out the websites for information about scholarships. Counselors, uh, admissions friends, thank you so much for joining us, for sharing this information about your institution. Students and families, thank you for joining us in this session today. We hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit about these specific institutions today. As you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. We ask for your feedback. And this is the last of the session, so there's no more to sign up for, but we encourage you to check back tomorrow at strivescan.com slash Virginia for this recording and all of the recordings. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and have a great evening. Bye-bye everyone.